Hey guys, Doug here with another Tech Tip Tuesday. It's about that time of year when all the projects are starting to hit the track. Whether it's your first project or you've had a few, you might be to the point where your car is starting to wheelie a lot. You know, we all set everything up over the winter and we hope that it's the best, but you know, you gotta start somewhere. And uh, especially with like box bodies and some of the four link style cars, even F bodies and stuff, uh, they tend to do wheelies a lot, especially in like stock suspension style form, which is what a lot of people run. And uh, there's a, several ways of keeping that from happening. I mean, one of them is gonna be uh, your weight ratio front to back. When you have a four or 500 horsepower car, you might wanna put all your weight in the back to try and get it to transfer weight. But when you have a thousand to 2000 horsepower radial car, you might wanna get like a 54 or 56% weight bias in the front. And every car is different with every suspension, depending on how low the car is, what your bar angle is and stuff like that. A good place to start, especially if it's your first car, if you don't have a set of these um, with any car, is a set of travel limiters. They make these in various different um, options. We sell this chain style travel limiter. Basically what it does, it's gonna connect your lower control arm to your chassis. And all you're trying to do with a suspension travel limiter is limit the amount of extension that the front uh, suspension can have. Basically your front suspension, just the springs and the momentum and the inertia, uh, you know, when you start to launch a car, that basically is helping the front end coming up. Once you get the uh, front spring moving, it's going to basically help lever the front end up. So once it starts to go up, it doesn't stop. And the whole concept of a travel limiter is to stop that before it goes too far. And, you know, there's no set um, amount, especially on like a, a regular style door car. A lot of chassis cars will only have an inch or so of front travel. And, you know, whether you have a slick or a radial car and small tire, big tire, we'll change this also. But like what we do on cars when we take them out for the first time is we'll just kind of put them, you know, pretty neutral. We'll, you know, wherever the car sits, um, we'll give it a couple inches of suspension travel. And then from there, you can see like in this kit that we sell, you have a bunch of different holes and I think they're a half inch apart. So you can basically split it by halves and then you have an offset pattern here. So you can even split it farther so you can make fine adjustments. So um, whether you use this hole or this hole will usually alter it about a quarter of an inch. So get a good start. If it keeps wheeling, you can just keep pulling, you know, you'll want to basically put some weight down on the front end and then put the pin in the next hole down and the next hole down and the next hole down. Uh, very rarely is it completely bound up to where it has no suspension travel. But uh, they also sell an inner and outer shaft style where you can put a pin so it just basically lets a shaft slide a certain amount and then stop. Those are really good for drag racing. They're not so great for the street because you have, it's just going in and out of each other and they're a pretty tight fit without a bearing, without any type of lubricant. You basically have a shock with no oil in it. So they can gall up and bind up and get hot and cause issues if you drive them a lot on the street. My Nova, for example, if you look, has a an adjuster built into the A-arm. Um, so basically we're using the top A-arm and uh, when that A-arm wants to go down, AKA it's extending, you can adjust this screw to hit this stop down here and uh, have a lot of fine adjustment. So that's pretty cool. A lot of early GM aftermarket style control arms will have that style, uh, especially with this Smith Racecraft front end. So that's another option. And like I said, you know, none of these are more right than another. They all have like anything in racing and cars has its own situational acceptance and uh, what's good for that situation. So about the only drawback to the chain style limiters is sometimes they can be noisy. A good fix for that is to just put some heat shrink over them, heat the heat shrink up, and that'll kind of keep the metal from clanking around. But otherwise, this is a tried and true option. I think they're like 60 or 70 bucks on our website. And uh, they come with a quick pin, the hardware, all your mounts, all your pieces. Even what we found recently, uh, one of our friends, John Doc, has an IRS fifth gen Camaro. And he said that um, putting these on actually helped the IRS. His car was transferring enough weight to where it was actually unloading the IRS. Um, as soon as he put these on there, the car would come up to a certain point and then just stay. And uh, it worked a ton better. So 
he even promotes them for IRS cars, which was a new application that we never really considered. Uh, a lot of IRS cars don't do wheelies versus a leaf spring or four link ladder bar or whatever. So basically, you know, if we can stop that spring from extending um, further, it's gonna slow the inertia down in the front and slow the momentum of the front end coming down up. And uh, that's the whole goal. Going up and doing a wheelie is basically only good for the picture that's being shared the next week online, but it definitely doesn't make you go faster. And if you get in one of these high horsepower cars and it starts to come up, you'll realize it's not a whole lot of fun because they usually don't want to come back down. That can be really expensive on parts. So these are a good safety thing. They're good for making you go faster and they definitely will save on a lot of parts and expenses from control arm slamming and oil pans, transmission pans and everything else in between. So of course there's a lot of other things that you can do to make a car stop doing wheelies. A dual adjustable front strut will also help, but it's nice to have all of the tools so that you can use everything in your toolbox to tune your vehicle um, to stop doing wheelies, to go straight, to go to keep the front end down and go forward and not up. So I hope that kind of explains what a uh, suspension travel limiter is for in the front and hopefully you can apply it to your car and keep uh, from doing wheelies and save some money on parts. Thanks for tuning in guys. We appreciate all of your questions and comments uh, down below. It gives us ideas so we can make the next Tech Tip Tuesday video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button and we will see you next time.